Alan Turing was a British mathematician. Among many other important contributions, he is known for having developed a machine that helped break the German Enigma code in World War II. In 1936, Turing published what became the most famous theoretical paper in the history of computing. It introduced the idea of an ideal machine that could solve any solvable problem using simple rules. Then, in the mid-1940s, the development of automatic calculating machines took off. These machines were high-speed, electronic, digital, multi-purpose, programmable, and able to store data. Looking back on that timeline, it is easy to assume that Turing's paper in 1936 was a preface to the future complex ideas of machines and computers. But according to historians that study the development of computing machines, this assumption is questionable. Join us as we talk to historian professor Leo Corey about his take on this common misconception in the computer world. Leo Corey is a professor of the history and philosophy of science and the current Dean of Humanities at Tel Aviv University in Israel. He is widely published on the history of mathematics and early 20th century physics and studies the connections between mathematics and its broader cultural settings. He also has a lot of experience working in the data storage industry. A main topic in the history of the modern computer is the connection between the idea of the universal Turing machine as published in the 1936 article and the way that computers were designed and then built in the mid 40s. This is a mathematical article that deals with mathematical questions and in no way he went in the direction of developing anything that is remotely connected with the ideas that he posed in his paper and on the contrary he went in the direction of uh, using what we call analog machines. To prove that there is no connection, Professor Corey points to a relatively short period between the 1936 paper and the time when Turing started to work with deciphering machines at the World War II Codebreakers cryptography site named Bletchley Park. There is very little over there about the question of how you should build or would build or could build a machine, a machine for calculating or for doing other kind of tasks that we relate nowadays with a computer. And you see very clearly that he did not even try to connect the design of possible machines with the ideas that he had in the articles. I simply use evidence that was well known, but sometimes you can look at the evidence from a different perspective and using different presuppositions and then the entire picture comes out differently. So the idea of a machine as it appears in 1936 in the article, it's not even an idea of what a machine could be or should be or even a blueprint of a possible machine. So why is this important? Professor Corey says that it is very important for us to study and correctly understand our history so that we can better prepare for our future. If you want to understand your own world as a person who is involved in research and development of computers and in the computer world, I think it's interesting to look at the past and to understand how things work because we live in a very technological world and it is important to understand how did we come to this point where we are now. And I think that this little story sheds important and interesting light on that issue. Find out more in the contributed article, Turing's Pre-War Analog Computers, in the August 2017 edition of Communications of the ACM.